We're getting closer. You can just about see our train chugging down the line. Next up is our final section covering scenery features. This is where we really get creative and in the process bring our entire layout together. We'll call on a variety of materials you can get from any hobby shop or home building supply center. We'll show you how to create a lifelike hill out of foam, how to sculpt a rock face and color it. You'll learn how to simulate water, build roads and plant trees. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. We'll begin at the gravel plant. Since the track roadbed wouldn't be raised at the plant like it is on the main line, Dick is going to build up the foundation for our structure to get an authentic look. That's what model railroading is all about, and scenery is a big part of achieving scale realism. After marking the location of the structure on the foam, we'll cut sheets of cork to size and stack them to the correct height. You can find sheet cork at your local hobby shop. Build up the area marked earlier, and don't forget the area between the spur tracks. It doesn't have to be perfect, because later we'll use plaster to create a nice finished slope around our cork foundation. Before gluing the cork in place, position the structure to make sure everything lines up. Time for the liquid nails for projects and the old caulk gun. Again, we're using an adhesive that is foam friendly. In other words, it won't eat away the foam when applied. While our glue dries, we can move to another part of our layout. The Madison Central plan calls for some rolling hills located near our gravel company. We'll use layers of styrofoam to build our hills, and Dick will start by marking and cutting a paper pattern for the shape of the first hill. There are several varieties of foam board available from your local building supply center, and here we're using the same one-inch foam we used for our tabletop. In one corner of your sheet, transfer the shape of the pattern to the foam. Here Dick is using a drywall saw to make the cuts. Cut on an angle, just like we did for our sloping lake shoreline. After cutting, put the base piece back onto your layout to make sure it fits. That's it. Perfect. Repeat the same steps to cut two more layers for our hill, each one patterned on the layer below. Remember to cut each piece from a corner of our foam sheet, that way the edges will align nicely with the corner of the table. Now we'll move to the hill between the main line and the gravel company spur tracks. Create a paper pattern like we did earlier and cut the base layer from the foam sheet. A little trimming may be necessary to get the shape you want. Don't worry, we'll be shaping the hills later, so you don't have to be too precise. It's handy to pin the foam in place as you go. That way you can work on the next layer without readjusting the layer underneath. Our second hill will be only two layers high to give the terrain some variety. When the foam is in its final position, mark each layer and remove them from the table. Next up, we're going to glue the pieces to the tabletop. Apply the glue inside the marks and spread the glue with a putty knife. This will speed up the drying process. Also, pin each layer down along the edges while you work on gluing the next layer. For the corner pieces, we have clamped four vertical boards to our table to give us an easy way to align each piece. After the glue dries, it's time to start working on the final shape of our hills. This can be done with a variety of tools. Dick is using a rasp, a knife, a wire brush, a sanding block, and the drywall saw. Remove the pins as you trim and shape the foam. 
Stop when you are happy with the contours of the hill, but leave the rough texture of the foam. This will create a natural feel once we finish our scenery with ground cover. Now we have an attractively carved landform. It'll make a great backdrop for the Glacier Gravel Company. But not before we add more detail, like a rock face in the cut between our hills. Mask the track to protect it because we're going to be using plaster to make our rock face. Mix some casting plaster according to the directions on the package and apply it to the base of the hills with a putty knife. As the plaster starts to set up, work it into a vertical wall. Before the plaster is completely dry, use an X-Acto knife to score the face of the wall both horizontally and vertically. This makes a realistic looking rock form that will look great once it's painted and we put ground cover on our hills. While our rock face dries, let's build some roads. We'll be using a road building kit from Woodland Scenics. This step is exciting because you really begin to see your layout take shape. Start by placing your completed structures on the table. Determine and mark their final positions on the foam. For Main Street, Dick has measured for two lanes of traffic and parking lanes in front of the shops. In HO scale, this comes to about six inches. Using a straight edge, draw the roads onto the foam. Dick is marking the road for the gravel company site with dashed lines because this area won't be paved, but it will have a gravel finish. Because of the height of the roadbed on our track, use casting plaster to build up the approaches to the crossings. While we're mixing plaster, now is a good time to create a nice gentle slope to the cork foundation for the gravel plant and the area between the spur tracks. Once the plaster dries on our crossings, we can use the foam tape from our road building kit to create forms for pouring the concrete on Main Street. After mixing the joint compound according to the directions, we added the paint from our kit right into our mixture to create a gray that will look perfect as weathered concrete. Use a straight-edged piece of scrap material to spread the mixture, just like leveling real concrete. Although the road seems thin, it is the correct height for the curbs on Main Street, and it looks much better than painting a road right onto the foam. While the concrete on Main Street cures, it's time to go back to our rock face and add some color. We'll be using acrylic paints right from the tube. Mixing a brown and a yellow creates a color that will look very realistic when ground cover is added to the hills above the rock. After Main Street has dried, pull up the foam tape to reveal a nice clean edge to our road. <laughs> 